This video looks at three questions. The first two are expanding, and then the third one is a worded question, which is uh, very typical exam questions on um, the start of algebra. So three questions. Feel free to skip to the question you're interested in, which is indicated in red. Question 7, we're expanding uh, algebraic equations now. Now, what these questions have in common is that there is, is some sort of brackets in here, right? and there's a number that we have to multiply by whatever's in the bracket. Now, the only times you've probably seen brackets so far, right, these things here, is when we're doing uh, BOMDAS, which is that order of operations, okay? So there's brackets, then multiplication, division, subtraction, addition, right? But this time, what's inside the brackets is already simplified to its, to its uh, most simplified spot. So we actually can't do any more with the brackets, right? So the technique to, to solve these expanding questions right, is this number at the front of the bracket, which if there's a number at the front of something and there's nothing in between, we can assume there's a little time sign there. Right? It's like if we have 2a, that's the same as 2 times a. Okay? We multiply this number by every individual item in the bracket. And that's going to be our answer. So if we use that technique, we can go 2. We have to multiply this 2 by each one in the bracket. Well, 2 times x will be 2x. And then 2 times 3 is going to be 6. And I put a plus sign here because this number we are getting, 2 times positive 3, is positive 6. And it's not attached to this, to this item in any way because each individual one we do is going to be its separate own little item. So this is how we, we expand right, these algebraic equations with, with a number at the front with uh, something in the brackets. So we'll go ahead and do the next three as well. So, using the same step, we multiply this number at the front by each element. Well, 7 times x will be 7x. And 7 times minus 9, oh, this is a minus 9, so we'll put a minus sign there. 7 times 9 is 63. And that's, that's as far as we can go. That is our expanded answer. Third one, we'll have minus 3 times x. Well, that's just minus 3x. And then let's do the last one, minus 3 times 2. Well, that'll be minus 6. And the last one, we'll go minus 6 times x. So we minus 6x. And minus 6 times minus 6. Now, two negative numbers multiply, we'll give a positive number. And 6 times 6 is 36. So there are our four answers for expanding uh, these algebraic equations with, with brackets and numbers at the front. Question 8. We are again expanding algebraic equations, but now these are some harder problems, but we can use the same techniques in question 7. Okay, we have 3 plus, and we have this little algebraic equation here in itself, 2x plus 4 in brackets. So, remember, remember our order of operations where we have to do uh, multiplication first, because we want to expand this to maybe get an easier answer. So we can use the same technique, question 7. Well, let's leave the 3 plus, because we can't do anything with that at the moment. When we multiply 2 by each element here, it's going to be 2x, and then 2 times 4 will be 8. Right? Now, this doesn't look like our final answer yet, because we can still add 3 and 8. This 2x is actually, is actually complete. We can't do anything more with that. So, our final answer can be 3 plus 8, which is 11. 11 plus 2x. Cool. Second question. Well, we have two of, of what looks like the same as question 7. So let's go ahead and, and, and solve this. We can go 2 times x, 2x. Two, 2 times 3, 6. Plus 3 times x, which is 3x. And 3 times 2, which is plus 6. Now, this doesn't quite look like our final answer because we have some x's and some x's and some, and some normal numbers. So, let's see if we can equate, which is that word, to, to get everything into one easy answer. 
2x plus 3x is 5x and 6 plus 6 is 12. And that is our final answer for that question. And the last one, it can go minus 2 times 2x, which is minus 4x. Minus 2 times minus 4 is positive 8, so plus 8. Now we have minus 3 right, times minus, uh, minus 3 times 3x, so that's going to be minus 9x. Right? And we have minus 3 times 5, which will be minus 15. Right? And we can find an easy way to write this final equation because we have minus 4x minus 9x. Right? So we have minus 4x minus 9x, we get minus 13x. And if we have positive 8 minus 15, that'll be minus 7. Right? So this is our final answer for this equation. Question 9. We are finding the area of these shapes, right, these two shapes here, using algebra, because we might not have all of the all of the required numbers to be able to get an uh, exact or uh, clear answer. So we're going to have to use some of our algebraic techniques of the earlier few questions. Okay. Well, the first question here is a rectangle. And we and you might have already known to solve the area right, of a rectangle it's just length times width. Right? So if we know that, we can go 2 times x plus 1. Now, if I just write this, it is the right concept, but that might not be full marks of what the teacher says. And because what the teacher, he or she, is looking for is, is we want to have it in an algebraic sort of way of writing it. And you might have seen this in previous questions, and this is the correct answer. Or, the expanded version where we, we did in earlier questions, where we go 2x uh, plus 2. So this is the what they call the factorised answer, or the expanded answer. And the way I got from here to here is that we notice that it's 2 multiplied by this, this whole width, which is actually x plus 1 in itself. It's not 2 times x, then plus the 1, because we have to multiply the length and the width. So it's 2 multiplied x plus 1. Okay? So once we have it in this form, or well, we can get rid of the little time sign, which is this form, okay? and then we can expand it to get our final answer. So that is the area, to, uh, the area in an algebraic way of writing it of the first uh, rectangle. Now the second question here is a typical exam question. So we'll work our way through this using our algebraic techniques. Now they haven't given us all of the information and it does look like a quite a weird shape. What we have the power of doing is, is maybe breaking this shape up into little sections to get our final algebraic answer. Okay, so a good way of doing this, I'm going to put a little dotted line here. And what I did, what I did there is I broke this, this whole shape up into two different areas. This area here and this area here. And if we calculate each area and then add them together, we can get the total area. Okay, so to get this bottom area here, well we have x, or this is a rectangle in itself, so we can multiply the length by the width. We have x multiplied by x plus 3. So we can go x multiplied by x plus 3. And if we wanted to add this area here, Okay, we have, actually before we find that, I'm just going to put a little little, uh, little one there. Right? That's the area we found here. And we're going to find the area 2 here, and then we'll add them together. Okay, So, I want to find the area of this little rectangle. Now, to find this, we want to find uh, the width times the length. Right? So, there's a few different ways of doing this. If this whole side is 2x, right? But from here to here, from here to here, is 1x. Well, from here to here must be 1x, because 1x plus 1x is 2x. Okay? So, in my head, I'm just going to bring that rectangle out here, just for a second. And this is going to be x. But, in order to find out the area of my, uh, 
of my rectangle, I need to find this length as well. And they didn't give us this length in the questions. So this is why it's a, a problem solving question. Well, if this is x plus 3, okay, and this is 2, to find out from here to here, which is the same as here to here, or here to here, it's all the same length, it's going to be x plus 3 minus 2. x plus 3 minus 2. That will give us this leftover length here. Okay, so we know now that this is x plus 3 minus 2. And this is x. But let's just write this x plus 3 minus 2 in a little bit of a, a neater way because 3 minus 2 is 1. So I'm going to go shut away and rewrite that as x plus 1. So now the area of this top rectangle is going to be x plus 1 multiplied by x, length times width, to find the area. So x, x plus 1. So we have our two areas, 1 and 2. And to find out the total area, we need to add them together. So we can go x... Actually, in the one step, I'm going to expand this, this whole thing just to make it a little bit, a little bit uh, quicker. So this is going to be uh, x times x is x squared. And x times 3 is 3x x times x is x squared, x times 1, well x times 1 is 1x, so we can just put x. So if we want to add this all together, we go x squared plus 3x plus x squared plus x. So our final answer, does that fit in the screen there? It sure does. x squared plus x squared, well don't be confused now we have squares because this could just be Anything could be apple squared. So x squared plus x squared is just going to be 2x squared. And 3x plus x will be 4x. And there is our total area of this obscure shape that they gave us in the question.